Hello everybody, welcome back to Plot 97A. My name's Simon. How are we all doing? I hope you're all really, really well. Welcome to the the end of May tour. It's Wednesday the 29th today and this video is going to go up today at some point. It takes 3-4 hours for it to, to load up, especially in, in 4K. But how are we all doing? I hope you're well. Well the sun is starting to a little bit of blue sky up there but it's been pretty wet the last couple of days as we've all had well as we, as we all know in the UK but uh, if we can get a few days we've got high pressure moving in so absolutely thrilled to get a bit of sun and I'd just like to show you the tomatoes I put a little bit of edge in we got gifted some timber as well the other day so thank you you know you are for for sorting us all out and that got left by the porter cabins and that has sorted out a few of us it was an old fence uh, that was taken down from a skate park so and they put a new one up there obviously so it's all reclaimed but we're using it and i just wanted to show you how how the tomatoes are doing they're pretty pretty good and somebody commented about they need um, a couple of them look a little bit droopy. These are the Kodandis and I think it's just the leaves because the majority of them, the other ones, are looking pretty, pretty good. So we've got uh, Moneymaker, Tigerella, the San Marzan, Sweet Aperitif and the Kodandis. And again, this is the Kodandis uh, and I think it's just the leaves but thank you so much for your comment now we're still in the neglect stage and they had their first drink though I, I left them for seven days but as soon as I read that comment I run down here to um, to give them all a drink now there's I don't know where but I'm following a brilliant video by Hugh Richards uh, and it's we're just trying to help him with his experiment um, so these are indeterminate tomatoes and the the term for indeterminate means that they will flower and fruit until the first frost but we're still in the neglect stage you can see i've given them a, a good drink and i'm watering them once or twice a week only um because we're trying to we don't want that split we don't want to um the fruit to to split and apparently that happens when um they're irregular watering so we're doing feed on fridays Friday's is feed day and we're uh, going to be watering them two, maybe three times a week. But they're all looking really healthy. Well, they're not looking too bad at all. I'm, I'm over the moon with them. Again, my first year of growing tomatoes. And when you said, you said about the, the neglect stage, I've not tied them into their, um, their canes yet. Um, and... I've not taken off of any of the, the side shoots yet. I'm going to leave that for another couple of weeks um, because beautifully put, they are the solar panels and they will help support the root system. So obviously for, for healthy growth. And again, we're just trying, we're not tying them in because we want, we want them to kind of form a real strong um, trunk as it were. Um, so, but very, 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 very happy. And these are our determinate tomatoes or our bush tomatoes. So I'm going to be calling, I'm going to forget this again, but I'm going to be calling these trailing and these bush. But determinate and indeterminate. And these determinate ones will flower and then die. So they'll put all their energy into um, producing fruit and then they're gone potentially before the first frost but these were left outside over the last couple of days and i've just brought them in here to hopefully to perk them up a little bit as you can see a couple of the leaves have started to to go um, and i know that's because they've just been so so they've been so so wet um so and this is our timber look at this absolutely thrilled with it and there's a nice bit of um six by two there or I think it's six by two at the bottom and I'm going to be building our first raised bed with them our squashes all yeah just just doing really really well really really happy with them 
So we've got our we've got our honey boat, patty pan, pink banana, butternut squash, and spaghetti squashes. And I'm going to be sticking a couple of them in in the ground. Let's just run around now. I said this was the first schoolboy error that I made in the last video. Again, my head was all over the place. It's kind of rushing it a little bit. These are runner beans we've got in here. Direct sowed into the ground, a little bit of compost, and hopefully we've got the canes up there now, so we can get get a few runner beans. And we've done exactly the same with our balotis. Um So direct sown. And our cosmos, another brilliant comment. Somebody commented about you don't realise about the how high they get, how how big a plant grows. Now these grow to two or three foot, uh, and you get quite a, an abundance of flowers on them. And just brilliant comment about you know will I be able to harvest? I think I will. I think I'll be okay. I'm, I think I'm going to leave them in. But thank you so much for your just just brilliant brilliant advice it, uh, it, it if it make any comment that, that kind of makes me think and makes me stop and and um, have a look at things is much much appreciated and we've put uh, beetroot and oh blog I can't forget what we're in. celeriac celeriac and beetroot are in um, and uh, radishes now this, this, I, they're not looking that great but I think there's something to be said about direct sowing um, so I'm, I'm you know if they if these don't work out I'm gonna I'm I'm definitely gonna be doing some more direct sowing because of that great philosopher Neil from the young ones once said we sow the seed nature grows the seed we eat the seed <laughs> so I'm gonna be doing some more direct sowing but some flowers all looking good and I've just stuck a few um, of the habaneros in here into the pepper bed and our purple sprouting broccoli again I'm hopefully going to be making a little raised bed with some tunnels but brassicas, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower it, it, people we all struggle with it down here because of um, club root we have in the ground so it's just one of those one of those things that we have to overcome and carrots as well carrots is another one that we all seem to struggle with we've got some brilliant growers but they're, they're all in separate containers and they get the soil is mixed and the netting they're that they're, they're, they're really geared up for it but direct sowing um a carrot into the ground people people struggle with unfortunately but look at these and the dahlia is coming out as well now that was in one that was in the pot so that's a lot more advanced than our dahlias that are in the ground but another thing mistake how could i mistake this for a polytunnel this is the greenhouse and our onions i've taken those out of the tray because they were in just one tray and i put them into their own little seed trays just to separate them up just to separate the roots because it's, it's painstaking trying to separate such delicate things peppers are all doing okay i put i'm going to be putting one of each at least one of each into a pot and the rest of them are going to go into the ground but we're just again i'm just waiting another week or two i don't want to be too impatient about putting them into the ground because i want a real strong healthy root system into the pot as you can see what i was talking about just nipping them out can you see how that's gone to two leaves and the others are single leaves so I've nipped a few out um, because they're just being be more of a bush but very 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 happy again they take their time you need to be patient with them and look at this this is just well if I can if I can keep these going now I'm gonna be this is gonna make my year make my growing year I'll give you a little second and guess what it is lemongrass now I was given a very very small pot of this and I just teased them out teased them out and they've been in for two or three days now and they've started to perk up so the, the, hopefully the greenhouse um, we're gonna keep them going but I would that would just make my year if we could if we could grow some lemongrass 
Um, I tried to do ginger last year. I might try it again this year, actually. Just shop-bought ginger. Uh, and we've got a couple of melons. There's a honeydew and a cantaloupe. So it's just finding space. Where does all the space go when you start planting stuff? It's quite incredible. It, uh, it just... Um, it just feels, yeah, the space just goes, doesn't it? But we're pretty happy at the moment. All well, that sun's trying to creep out from behind the clouds. Just want to go into the food bank plot and just give you a little tour of there. <laughs> this is why I have, I have broad beans on the mind because I went over to the food bank plot last week um, and we just pulled one, one pod off and just let them roar they're absolutely delicious absolutely delicious now we could put our last bit of fence up we've got the gladioli remember we put the gladioli in last year they've started to show which is amazing so the food bank plot is a initiative that's been set up by uh, by our committee and obviously it's to we get a lot of overs and we get a lot of people that have got an abundance of stuff so people and that people just haven't got the space so we've designated one one plot and it, the 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 ground rent is paid for by by the committee and we're just volunteers we just help but i i have to say i haven't put in a great deal of effort over the last few weeks it's all been down to the other volunteers and somebody said about potatoes these are potatoes and these are all going to be going down to the food bank looking incredibly healthy and look at these for broad beans so we've kind of said we if we're going to do something we're going to try and do crops of it you know get a good amount and these have been going down into the food bank box there are some beetroots and these are all overs these are all We've got our lettuces, remember a dozen lettuces, and some more beetroots, and they are pretty sure they're purple sprouting, and they've been absolutely hammered. So some successes and some failures, obviously, and some beans. But all the canes, again, got donated, donated to the project, so we're absolutely thrilled. It's, it's, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to sum up why we why this 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 is happening but i've been that person i've gone to the food bank um and yeah they're they're an absolute lifesaver so for, for us all to, to come together as a community and produce this project is a wonderful wonderful thing uh, and also a wonderful thing i watched this week thank you so much nikki thrifty green life massive shout out to you massive respect uh, I watched your video um, and this is obviously if any talk of mental health mental health triggers you please please don't don't watch this the last thing I want to do is uh, to trigger or upset to anybody but she she made a brilliant video uh, about her struggles um, and about how gardening um, has has helped her and I echo that 100% I've struggled for 10 12 years i had a massive breakdown and been on self was was on self-destruct mode um, and through the help and support of my gp uh, the community mental health team and a few really really great initiatives um i'm you know i'm getting better uh, still struggle sometimes but every day's a struggle um but it just really echoed with me when you said you, you you've come off your medication now well i've through the support of my, and and conversations with my gp i came off my medications in february march time and i just feel so much better for it um but obviously if you don't just stop taking your medication you need the support uh, you need to let your gp know you need to be open and honest with all of those but the initiative that that got me really started um, I done a, I done the cognitive behavioural therapy and dialectic behavioural therapy, and there was a course that was offered to me. It was a six-week course down in an allotment in Throop, which is in the south coast of the UK, which is where where we are now. And I took took it, and the first five minutes of me turning up to this, 
allotment, I just felt home. I, it was an unbelievably overwhelming um, feeling. And the people, the staff, the, the guy that runs it are just absolutely just brilliant, brilliant. They're heroes, mate, they're heroes. Um, and the allotment is a no dig allotment, so that's where I first came into contact with no dig. Uh, and I didn't, you know, I, it, it was just, it just blew me away. But we done, a f we learnt a few, a few things, you know, we was all a group, we were all, you know, the s people that um, were struggling to, to deal with things. And it just, it's key, it just, the people make you feel brilliant and just learning something new. Uh, I've always grown sunflowers and I've grown chilies for a few years um, but learning to um, learning about just compost and um, how to sow a seed to make it grow how to um, take cuttings and it's just a brilliant brilliant course and this is why you hear a lot of um, people talking uh, with mental health and gardening because it just goes hand in hand and it really really kind of I, I i'm bitten now and it's helped me out through through some quite difficult traumas so nikki maximum respect to you mate i doff my cap thank you so much for doing that because that's just inspired me just to open up a little bit and people that know me know my story they they really do this is why i get gifted um tables and chairs and air fryers and and all sorts of stuff um, but money's still tight my biggest expense this year has been compost um, but you know through the support again of the people that are down here you know I'm pretty open and honest everybody knows the situation and they've all been brilliant they really really have so this is where you really kind of feel community kind of comes together and and I'm just uh, be open and honest but please don't stop taking your medication without y your GP support because uh, those guys those guys know what they're doing the GPs the nurses the psychiatrists they're all the the people that run the initiatives like the gardening allotment they're all just brilliant people that are professionals that want to help you want to support you want to give you that real lift and they do it's the system that's broken in the uk not the people that are working in the system they're working incredibly hard they're incredibly thoughtful so thank you all to all you guys thank you and let's, we're just carrying on we're just soldiering on have a great gardening week i'm sorry to uh kind of have to bear that to be to you all but yeah i kind of feel i kind of yeah yeah I think you know where I'm coming from now I wanted you to get you know to get where my kind of backstory I'm not going to go into all the gory details believe me but gardening gardening really really helps right that's my lot have a great gardening week guys sun's come out look look at those broad beans they're absolutely incredible right have a great gardening week guys Bye for now.